I'm Stephanie Gamolka, Auction.com correspondent. Our live coverage of CrimeCon continues this weekend. I'm joined right now by the executive producer behind the Murder for Hire series on Oxygen and one of the subject of the series, Megan Varicus, and the executive producer, Adam Kasson. Thank you guys so much for joining us here today. So tell me about, you know, what is it like for you guys to be here at CrimeCon? Do you guys have a panel going on? We do, yeah. Uh, we're actually going to do a panel after this um, about Megan's case um, that she was... Uh, nice enough to share her story with us on our, on our program that we featured. She was an intended victim and uh, one of the murder for hire case and was a survivor. And uh, we're about to talk about it with her and the undercover detective who worked on the case, Javier Duran, and um, two of the prosecutors who prosecuted the case and brought the perpetrator to justice. Yeah. Megan, why did you want to tell your story to other people? I think it's important um, to hear it from a victim's perspective. Um, and it's, it's not an easy thing to go through. Yeah, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Adam, you know, what, what was the, um, the force behind you wanting to make this series? Was there a trend that you were seeing? Yeah, well, the, the partners, you know, this is produced by Shed Media and Wolf Films, and um, my, the producing partners on it, we have it's Pam Healy and Tom Thayer and Dick Wolf, um, who we work with a bunch on stuff, and Dan Pearson. Uh, and, and a bunch of other people who work on the case as well, the show as well. And we've been doing other investigative series and doing cases that were investigative series and ones that were adjudicated. We started coming across these cases, and to our surprise, it wasn't an isolated incident. There was one case, two cases, three cases, and there was all over this country. And sadly, uh, there seems to be no shortage, and a lot of the people that you would think that commit these kind of crimes um, are not the kind of people that you would think would commit these kind of crimes. They haven't often done violence in some of the cases. They haven't ever gone to this, um, uh, to, to a place of actually wanting to, to murder. And so we have on our show, you'll see doctors and or wannabe doctors and, uh, or uh, lawyers. We have, you know, grandmothers and all sorts of different people that we wouldn't normally think would do this kind of thing. And it just was so interesting. And then just the investigators themselves and the undercovers of what they have to go through to actually infiltrate and solve these crimes and save someone's life. And so it just was so compelling and we all loved it. And then we got with our oxygen partners and, and so we were fortunate enough to get some really um, amazing cases from these amazing investigators and intended victims who shared their stories with us. Right, right. And it must be so hard to go through and so shocking when you know, you're know you the intended victim. I just want to ask, did you listen to the recordings or the video that was taken of Valerie McDaniel and Leon Jacob and what was that like for you? I did. Um, I heard them played in court and I watched the trial after it occurred and it's shocking, it's disgusting that, you know, somebody you loved could get to that level. It, it really was, it, I, I can't, I can't, there's no one word for it. Right. It, it, it's definitely shocking. Yeah. What was it like to, you know, read your victim's impact statement there at the trial in front of him? They try to prepare you, um, but you don't realize how quickly it occurs. Mm -hmm. Literally, they give the verdict, and it's instantaneously do you have to walk in front of the entire courtroom and speak. Um, Did it feel like you were able to get the last word on this? Oh, definitely. Um, I had prepared for it, and you know, it was important to me. As hard as it was to get up there and do that, it yeah. was really important for me to do it. How has your life changed since the trial? Um, Obviously, I have a little bit more of a kind of a peace and a calm, but um, I don't think I'll be completely at rest until we get through the uh, appeals. Do you keep, so I know you're here today with the prosecutors and with Adam, do you keep in contact with some of the investigators that work on the case? I still live in Houston. Um, I did not want to leave, so their um, office is right down the street, so I do see them periodically walking and yeah. That's great. And then, Adam, I just want to ask, you know, what makes a murder for hire case, you know, so fascinating for you, but also for the public? Is it seeing that the alleged perpetrators aren't who you would suspect? Yeah, I think there's a couple things. That's one of it. I mean, just how, you know, how prevalent it is and how it's somebody that it seems like someone that you could know or somebody who has education and support throughout their life mm -hmm. that are not from a high risk community or high, you know, and, and, they're, and they're perpetrating these crimes, these crimes. But also we have this... Um, inside access, which has been great, that these investigators have given us this undercover footage, so these real sting operations that they have to record mm -hmm. um, to be able to prove intent beyond a reasonable doubt that this did pers this person did in fact want to murder. And so getting to watch that footage is riveting. Mm -hmm. 
and hearing the real human stories of the people behind Could you, it. Could you just oh, um, bring up your <laughs> mic a little? Sorry, <laughs> sorry I just want to make sure we can uh, have everyone hear <laughs> sorry, you. Sorry, I'm talking with my saying, hands. No, it, what you're saying is great. I yeah. just want to make sure everyone can hear no, you. No, and, just, and also amazing. just, you know, getting to speak with people like Megan who are willing to yeah. be, they're so courageous and so resilient and such an um, inspiration to, to so many, um, sincerely, when I, when, I, when I met you. <laughs> that's so true. And, uh, and it, that's, that's probably been the most rewarding thing about it. Yeah, is it, so I know you guys are close now after, you know, you shared your journey and, I, and that's such a personal thing. Is it difficult? when you have to reach out and kind of book an intended victim or an undercover agent when you're kind of looking at these stories in the beginning stages? We could talk to Megan about it. I mean, Megan... <laughs> yeah, you know, what is that well, like well, when you get, well, you know, well, she's get a been, phone she's call? Been, I'll just say one thing I'll say is she has been cautious in a good way. She's talked to some different media, and so we actually came out and, and flew out and met her for lunch, and I'd love to hear what was it about that <laughs> that made you... Because you wasn't sure at first when we first approached, right? About uh, There's very few people that I've spoken to directly. Um, Simply I'm just because ask you to bring up your, yeah, I, just want I to make don't sure we want hear you. Um, the story to be told in the wrong light. Um, I had a sen sense of trust with them and how they were portraying it and what the vision was behind the series, and that made me want to work with um, with Adam and his team. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's also an isolating thing to go through this. You kind of feel like you are alone, but is it kind of odd to also know that there are so many cases that there could be a series with this kind of topic? It's very strange, but it, it's, and it's sad that there are this many crimes like this that happen, but um, I guess it's good to know that I wasn't alone, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's very scary that it occurs more often than you'd ever imagine. Right. Such an important conversation, and thank you so much for sharing your story first in the series and then also joining us here today. We're going to have more um, from the Murder for Hire team that is behind the series with the prosecutors who worked on the case and the former undercover agent who also worked on the case. Stay with us.